max ranging. What is max ranging? You may have seen streamer Yazan Saudi Arabia abuse this by getting rank 1 through 10 a few seasons ago, which is actually why Blizzard upped the 25 wins necessary for top 500 to 50. Max ranging, also referred to as min maxing in the PC community, is the act of playing Overwatch with someone who is the lowest possible rank to duo with. For example, the lowest possible rank you could duo with as a GM1 player is a GM4. As the competitive Overwatch system allows for a gap of 3 STDs, aka skill tier divisions, in the Grandmaster rank. In Masters, you are able to queue with somebody who has won a whole skill tier below you, aka 5 skill tier divisions, and in Diamond and Below, it is 2 whole skill tiers, aka 10 skill tier divisions. Max ranging has existed ever since Overwatch released its competitive system many years ago. I'm not sure on the specifics in Season 1 with the 0 to 100 rating system, but from the release of the 0 to 5000 SR system in Season 2 to the end of Overwatch 1, max ranging has existed. Before I get into the video though, I just wanted to say that I absolutely love Overwatch. I have played Overwatch since the release of Overwatch 1, and I have played consistently since I was literally 13 years old. I want the game to live for a really long time, but playing Overwatch 2 with these issues I'm going to discuss is just near impossible. Now I'm not saying that Overwatch has had a good history with competitive systems, because there are many people back in Overwatch 1 who always complained about it, but it feels like with Overwatch 2 that we have taken so many steps back, and everything that Blizzard has learned with the path, they've just thrown away and not cared about it. Overwatch 2 has somehow managed to produce an even more broken way of abusing the system than we have ever seen. But before I get into how broken the system really is though, I kind of want to take a step back and look at the history of max ranging in Overwatch to really get a sense of how backwards the competitive system has become, and to really understand the effect that this new Overwatch system has had on the player base. Overwatch 1's competitive system differed from what we know now as the Overwatch 2 skill tier system. In Overwatch 1, bronze was between 1 to 1499 SR, silver 1500 to 1999 gold, SR, gold 2000 to 2499 SR, 3000 to 3499 SR, and finally Grandmaster 4000 to 5000. From bronze to diamond, you were able to play with somebody who was 1000 SR below you. In masters, this gap was decreased to 500. In Grandmaster though, the system released with a gap of only 250 SR. The gap for a Grandmaster player was small, and max ranging was possible, but at the time, top 10 players were achieving extremely high ranks. Other ways were found to cheat the system, such as 5 stacking at ungodly hours to face lower tier players, etc. However, max ranging in the Grandmaster slash top 500 rank was not as bad as it could be, because even though you were 4600, the lowest you could play with was 4350. Still, these were both very high ranked accounts. On September 11th, 2018, Blizzard released a patch that actually increased this range from 250 to 350. A whopping 100 SR. What did this mean? This meant that if you were not 4600, you were now able to queue with someone who was 4250. Now, for those of you that don't know, the difference between lower GM and higher GM was astounding. While 4250 SR was more like mid GM, the difference between that and a 4600 player was huge. This meant that if you had a good player on a 4250 account while you were going for 4600 SR and higher, the game would attempt to balance the lobby in your favor. Still, stacking at this time was the bigger issue, so max ranging wasn't necessarily the biggest problem Overwatch had in terms of lobby balancing. The game would constantly face you against 5 to 6 stacks when you and the rest of your team were solo queuing, especially in the higher ranks. This all changed, however, when on May 1st, 2019, Blizzard released Season 16 of Overwatch 1's competitive system. On May 1st, 2019, the Overwatch dev team decided that the only solution to stacking problems was to get rid of it completely in Grandmaster above. In a dev post made by Scott Mercer, they announced that stacking was leaving due to a difficulty in making fairer matches for people in higher elo, as there were less players there than in other ranks. However, this is when max ranging was seen in full force. Since you were only able to solo slash duo now, the only way to abuse the system was to play with someone who had the ability to put you in lower ranked lobbies. If you were 4500, which at the time of the release of the season was seen as a very higher, unachievable SR for many, you were able to play with someone who was low GM, aka 4150. This would put you in much easier lobbies, as it would guarantee you that somebody on your team was there to balance the lobbies in your favor. It meant that you had a good player posing as someone who was not high SR. The enemy team would also have a player that would match that low SR. This player on the enemy team was obviously not as good as a good player smurfing. He would just absolutely destroy them. I couldn't find the patch notes, but I might remember that they returned this 350 SR gap to 250, but I could be wrong. Max ranging stayed this way until the release of Overwatch 2, where Blizzard decided that enough was enough and they they decided to rework it entirely.
With the release of Overwatch 2, the number system was changed into a whole new tier system. Every rank went from either 500 to 1000 SR to 5 sub ranks as I mentioned earlier. Blizzard genuinely believed that this was a better route. With their new 7 win slash 20 loss card system, it would be better for the whole player base. However, what did this mean for max ranging? This is where we get into the absolute atrocity that Blizzard has created, starting with how awful the ranking system itself is. I want to start with how bad they did on the new card system. On releases I mentioned, the only time you would see your rank go up or down was after you won 7 games or lost 20 games. The wait for 7 wins felt so long and many people would lose a lot before achieving those 7 wins, so many felt that there was no incentive to finish their card because they knew that when they finished it, they would rank. On February 7th, 2023, Blizzard changed this so that now you could rank up or down after 5 wins or 15 losses. Even with this, it was still awful. This card and MMR system that Blizzard has created have been the main factors of what allows people to abuse the competitive system. It has created the most broken way of cheesing your rank than we have ever seen literally in the history of Overwatch. There's two things that I've mentioned that have allowed for people to abuse Overwatch 2's competitive system. The first is the card system, and the second is the change to MMR. Starting with the card system as I mentioned, the game currently allows you to lose 15 games or win 5 games before you are deranked or you rank up. This system is disgustingly abused when it comes to GM4 accounts that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Since the lowest rank you could queue with as a GM1 player was GM4, this is the best option for max ranging as I mentioned. Besides the fact that queuing as a GM1 player with a GM4 puts you in much easier lobbies for someone at your skill level, it actually means that you are able to dive deeper into much lower ranks that you were not meant to queue in. So if we take a step back and look at Blizzard's card system, since you are able to lose 15 games before deranking, Blizzard calculates the rank you are at before you finish the card. So as you are losing, your MMR will continue to decrease before you reach those 15 losses, where then your visible rank changes. This is what the game takes into account when deciding which ranks you are able to queue with. This means that if you lose 14 games and stop, Right before you lose your 15th, your GM4 account will now be way below the visible GM4 rank and actually dip into the master's rank. This means that you, as a GM1 player, will now be duoing with basically a master's player. All of this ties into MMR and Overwatch 2's many issues with it. Since currently there is no difference in being rank 1 or barely GM1 for visible ranks, they are both technically GM1. So since there is now no number system as there used to be in Overwatch 1 that would stop any form of duoing with someone less than 250 to 350 SR, you can now be an extremely high rank with a GM4 account that has those losses on the card. From now on, I will be referring to this account as what many in the community refer to it as a GM14 account. You can absolutely abuse this system with a regular GM4 account as I mentioned earlier, but if you use a GM14 account, the games are actually unbelievably unbalanced. Now, for Overwatch 2's ranking system, the developers stated that they want to try their best to match ranks for each role. So, if you are GM1 and say your other DPS, support, or tank is GM2, 3, 4, 5, or even masters, the game will attempt to match that on the enemy team. In Overwatch 1, this was done to a slight degree, but in my experience playing, I never really saw it to the extent that it is seen in Overwatch 2. Especially with the fact that there is only one tank now, the game really does try to match every role to someone with a similar rank. Now, imagine you are doing with someone on that GM14 account. You will actually, genuinely, be matched against a real GM4 or lower tank player. Sometimes you'll match against a GM1 tank, but usually that happens when someone on their team is also max ranging or their MMR is lower than their GM1 rank. As I mentioned earlier, your visible MMR can differ to your actual MMR. Now there's so much wrong with Blizzard's competitive system, but this is what takes the cake for what makes it absolutely broken. This idea that was come up with can literally be abused in any rank. I think it'd be hilarious to see someone in diamond max range their way into silver lobbies and just farm. Blizzard needs to change this and I promise you when I say 
that everybody, at least on console Overwatch, has absolutely abused the system to its limit. Almost every high ranked player on console abuses this system and that is why I decided after months of not using this cheesy system to rank up, I wanted to see what it was really like for everybody who claims a high rank in Overwatch 2. It was a day just as any other day when I decided that it was finally time to hit up my good friend Shield World. It was time to stop getting max ranged against. It was time to stop having Masters players on my team. Oh my god! My DPS was Masters 4! Oh my god! Holy shit! Holy shit. shit! It was time to stop facing accounts that were literally 0 and 40 that had platinum MMRs. It was time for me to try it myself. After everyone that has finished rank 1 for the past 4 seasons has done it themselves. It was time to abuse the system. The concept I was going for wasn't too hard to apply. Realistically, all I had to do was play Overwatch, which I already do. Thankfully, my good buddy Shield had a lot of accounts that were already low ranked, aka GM4 account. As I've mentioned though, max ranging with solely a GM4 account already gives incredibly easy lobby. And getting a GM14 account is just scummy. You literally have to throw 14 games in a row. You literally just sit there and you throw everybody's game 14 times. Thankfully, Shield had one account from a buddy that was actually kept for a quote unquote special cause that was 0 and 14. This was the only time that I wanted to do a GM14 account because it doesn't feel right to do and somebody was basically already giving it to us. These are the games that I got. Now arriving at Elix. Prepare for battle. Good up until Demon Slayer has some pretty low lows, if that makes sense. I would say it's good. Uh, Lord Smith arc, I think is what it's called. Yeah, that one's pretty boring in my. Opinion. So yeah, GM14 accounts put you in literal GM3 slash GM4 lobbies. Apparently, if my MMR was lower, I could have actually gotten Master's lobby. I've been told that also, you could even get lobbies with plats in it if you were on an O and 30 account, like the one I mentioned earlier that had plat MMR. I was going to show you guys a lot more lobbies because I actually do have almost every game that I played in recorded. And if not the whole game, I either have the loading screen and the ending screen. But I kind of decided there's no point because every lobby, like the ones I'm going to show here, are just the same. I play against players who aren't as high ranked as me and the lobbies just weren't balanced. Although one more thing that I do want to talk about that I think is really funny is another account that I had while playing on my main called Heartwires. I had this account just to play on for fun, but then I decided to see how high I can get it while also max ranging. Um, on this account, I never used a GM14, just pure GM4s. And what's really crazy is the fact that other team is just given masters and GM player. This clip you're going to see right here is the craziest example. Hey, I'm zero wasn't even that high rank and he literally has a masters two tank player and a GM five DPS. I am rank four. This is just unreal. Another crazy thing is that once I finished my 50 wins with minimal losses, I actually placed number four. What's crazy to me. And this is a sign showing how high MMR is now and how high max ranging gets your MMR. After I placed number four, it took me 29 games to go up one spot to rank three. I had to win 25 games and lose four games to go up one spot. MMR gained by max ranging is unbelievable. And the worst part is that there is literally no way to tell 
how close you are or how far you are from somebody's rank. I know that they're going to fix it next season with the whole new rank and a whole apparently change to the competitive system. But wow, I can't believe that this has been allowed to go on for so long. And it makes me really sad that Blizzard has designed a system that has brought us so far back from what we once had.